Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Design Cuts weekly live workshop. I am thrilled to welcome back our very good friend, the very talented Anna Aspnes. How are you, Anna? I am excellent. Thanks for having me. Anna, what are you going to be sharing today? I am going to be showing you three different ways that you can make a scrapbooking card using um, digital designs in Photoshop. So um, it's actually based on a real life card I did for my mom um, earlier this month when it was her birthday. Oh, beautiful. What yeah. a nice gift. Okay. Well, um, welcome everybody. I just, first of all, wanted to just kind of show you some of the products that we're going to be using in the session. So I've put together this bundle for you where we're going to be using this art play palette, Behold, which includes multiple digital papers and elements that you can kind of mix and match to coordinate, to create your own cards or your layouts or compositions. Uh, we've got these fun frames that we're going to use to personalize our card with um, these photos that I actually picked out. This is my mom and me when I was a little girl. Um, and then these artsy transfers. So these are layered embellishments, so layered files. Uh, they're very similar to these uh, transfers and overlays that are found in the Artplay palette. These are delivered in PNG format, whereas the um, artsy transfers, they are actually delivered in PSD format so that when you take them into Photoshop, then you have the option to customize. And then a couple of brush sets that we're also going to use this faded travel word art and um, some postmarks. So that is the collection we're going to be working with. And then I'm going to create three different types of card. We have this version here where we use elements as our focal point. And then we have a blended photo as our focal point. And then we have the actual version that I ended up sending to my mom. Um, and this one includes just a framed image. And then, of course, we would be uh, remiss not to mention the inside of the card, which also gets, as Tom said, some bespoke treatment. Question, Anna. How old are you in this photo? Um, I probably, I don't know, about uh, 10 months, maybe 11 months. I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> you, you look eerily similar. Like, so I can, guess you, so the you, hair is very similar. <laughs> yeah. well, even, even like facially, you can, you can tell it's you. Uh, I look like some weird alien. You can't really tell it's me when I'm a, a baby, but yeah, I'm seeing the Anna coming through. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Okay, so uh, in order to begin any kind of digital project, we have to establish a foundation. And so when I'm creating a card, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to decide basically the dimensions of my card. Typically, I like to create a card at five by seven, it might be four by six, eight by 10, whatever you choose to do. Um, but remember, you're going to have to fold that card over. So when you create your new layout, you go to file new, and you go to your width, you want your width to be double the dimensions of your card. So in my case, if I'm doing a five by seven card, I want the width to be double that. So it's gonna be 10 inches. And then I want the height to be the seven, of course, because we're not gonna be folding it over in that direction. Always choose your resolution as 300 pixels per inch because that's gonna ensure great print quality. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create that layout. So slightly different from the digital scrapbooking layouts that I create, which are 12 by 12. Uh, you want to make sure that you have your rulers visible and to do that you're going to go to view and ensure you have the rulers option checked and then by clicking into those rulers and dragging inward we can actually bring a kind of a line into the center of our canvas and this kind of shows where the card will be folded so the next part of this is to um, create our design area. And I like to kind of create a template for this. And so I'm going to select the rectangular marquee tool from the tools panel and kind of drag and just create a selection on the right hand side of our template and go to edit fill. Now make sure you have a new layer created in your layers panel and ensure that preserve transparency box is unchecked. For your contents, I like to just choose gray, but you could really choose any color that you like. Um, and all that does is it creates a nice template that we can clip our digital products to. And then if you notice on my um, example card here, I've also created this custom little logo where I've added made by, it could be homemade, created by, and then I've added in my name. And so you can simply add that by, again, creating a center, sort of demarcation, maybe bringing it down and sort of um, arranging that type there. So with the type tool selected, maybe you're going to add in created. 
I clearly can't type. <laughs> so um, yeah, I can do all sorts of things, but typing is not one of them. So you can kind of set that up there. You could also actually write, handwrite something and scan it and bring it into the back of the card there. Um, so I think I just added the created by, and then you can add in Anna. I use just a, um, a script font that allows you to kind of give it that handwritten look without it actually being handwritten. So there's another different version that I could have gone with. So once you have your card, so the idea of being is, is that you're going to fold that backwards. So this becomes the back of the card. This becomes the front of the card. And I'm just going to remove that so that we have this clear area to work with. So the next part of this is to create a fun, a fun front design. And the way to do this would be to use the artsy papers, which are in the art play palette. That's going to come to you into two different folders. And if you go into the first folder, you have all of the brushes that are part of this collection. Um, you can see them here if I increase them up. So lots of different textures and art strokes and uh, these fun pin needle holes. And then um, there's a fun little mask here, some splatters, etc. And then we have elements, which are the dimensional elements that we're going to be working with. So the ones that are outside of folders, they those are designed to add your own drop shadow layer styles. The ones within folders are actually included in various different versions. So you get the PSD version so that you can customize the included cast shadow, um, but you can also assemble these if you're working in pro programs other than Photoshop and elements. And then you also have the papery, which is really the foundation of the art play palette. Uh, you get usually at least four of these artsy papers, um, which are pre-designed uh, canvases on which you can actually add your photos and your words to create these uh, timeless keepsakes. So when I'm creating something, I like to choose a selection of different papers. So to do that, I'm going to hold down that control or command key if you're working on a Mac, and I'm going to select randomly these different papers. So I'm going to choose one, two, and four. Um, and then I'm just going to drag them directly into my workspace. I'm going to drag them into the back of my workspace here. You can also go to File, Open, and navigate to your digital art supplies that way. And then with the Move tool selected, I want to make sure that you have your template layer selected in the Layers panel and the Move tool selected in the Tools panel. Then you can kind of start dragging these papers over and then the beauty of this template layer really is so that you can go to layer, create clipping mask. And so that way your design is really contained within that area that we've defined. So you can resize by clicking on the corner point. Notice that double ended diagonal arrow. This allows me to decrease the size of that to make the design fit into that area of my card design. Um, you could also rotate it too. If I go onto one of these corner points, you can get this curved double-ended arrow. And this allows me, it's usually easier to do it on the corner, but this allows you to kind of rotate if you wanted to rotate it as well. Um, but I typically like to just try a few different options. Um, and then that way I can kind of get a feel with, you know, what, what is really going to work for me and, and what's going to work for my card design. So you can move it across like this. You can move it around and lots of different options available to you until you really just get something that you like. I think I added that one. Um, we added this one. And then this is the other one that I wanted to add into the mix. So again, I'm just going to that layer, create clipping mask and adding that down in order to create something fun. So I am actually going to kind of continually refer back to my um, kind of my test card just to make sure I'm kind of working in the right order um, mainly because um, I'm working with three different designs here and I want to try and kind of stay on top of those different designs. So this is the one that I kind of started with, um, I believe. I, I, we could end up messing, messing this up, but let's go with this one for now. Um, so my first focal point, or the, the goal is once we have a, an artsy foundation, is to use the area of interest in order to place a focal point. And a focal point is what leads the eye into a layout design, and it kind of guides the placement of your elements. And I've got three different ways to create a focal point, the first one being an embellishment cluster. 
So if I go into my elements, which we kind of took a peek at, and I select some of the words. So I have this really cool balloon element here, which I'm going to drag into my workspace. I'm going to use the PSD file um, because this is a layered file. It includes the shadow and the actual element itself. So I'm going to select those two layers by holding down the shift button on my keyboard. And then with that move tool selected, I'm just going to drag those two elements over. And so this is the beauty of having this drop shadow separate is, is that I can adjust that drop shadow, make it uh, less opaque if I want to. I can also go to edit fill and I can change the color of that. So say I want more of a kind of a reddish color to that. I can click the preserve transparency box, use that color picker, and then go ahead and cl click OK. And then it's going to change that to more of a brown color. You can also change the blending mode too. So you could go with a color burn blending mode or even a linear burn, which is also good. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create this focal point by using these various elements. So I wanted to bring in this word element as well. Now, if I drag this directly onto my canvas, you can see that it combines the drop shadow with the actual element. So that is the benefit of having those two um, elements separately and having the PSD file is, is that I have no way of editing that drop shadow unless I go to perhaps levels. But of course, then I'm going to be adjusting also the element as well as the drop shadow. So just kind of be mindful of that. So I'm placing that there. And then maybe we'll go and we'll get a couple of these elements that do not have drop shadows. The idea here is to add your own drop shadows. And this can be done fairly simply by selecting the element and going to layer, layer style, drop shadow. Um, and if I pull this across, you can see you can change the color, you can change the blending mode, you can change the opacity. Maybe you want to bring the opacity down to about 50, change the angle. I, pray, I like 120 angle. And then the distance, obviously, the greater the distance, the greater the shadow, and the greater the size, the greater the shadow also. Um, and then you can, once you have that how you want it, you can click on the next. Oops, my pen just kind of took off there. Um, select the next <laughs> uh, element in the layers panel and go to layer, layer style, and drop shadow. Um, and it will actually default to your previous drop shadow. So if you um, like the drop shadow that you added previously, you can go ahead and you can add that. Maybe consider reordering the layers so that the flatter elements are sort of below the more dimensional ones. Um, and that creates quite a nice um, focal point. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking multiple elements, we're bringing them together to create a um, cluster that provides visual interest to the card design. So maybe move this over here so we have a bit more visual. You could also at this point go in and add in some embellishment down the bottom here. So if I wanted to go to those um, brush, setters, brush sets that I was talking about, you have a couple of options. You can just drag these elements into your workspace and just add them in the background like this. You can go ahead and recolor them by going to Edit, Fill. Uh, let's go with the same brown color. Um, and then you could play around with the blending mode. So you can change the color of that. So that's kind of fun with the white in the background there. Um, soft light is pretty fun, but you can't see it very well. Um, so you can kind of play around with the levels. You can duplicate that layer. So lots of different ways you can bring in that visual interest. You can also go ahead and use the ABR file that's included with these brush sets. And if I drag that into my workspace and drag it over, and I don't have my panel open. So first of all, make sure you have your panel open, go to Windows and then Window Brushes so that this brushes panel is open and then go back and repeat that option or action. Then you can see that the postmark actually um, appears. And that's funny, actually, it even added the postmark brush set, even though the panel wasn't open. So I never knew you could actually do that. So that's kind of an interesting. But this is the way you would add the brushes, you select the paintbrush tool from the tools panel. And then you create a new layer, you always want to create a new layer when you're adding brushwork. And then maybe we'll go with um, more of a gray instead of, or even a brown. So notice how this color picker gives you the option to either sample from your layout, or you can just click around and get the right color. 
and then you can stamp on there like that. And that's also going to add some visual interest to any of the white areas in your design. So that's design number one. Do you have any questions, Tom? I, I try and go on mute, by the way, to preserve the audio quality. And sometimes okay. I forget to unmute. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think <laughs> I think this is fantastic. We had a comment um, about how your resources work just as well in Affinity which is great because oh, we, we have a lot, of, uh, a lot of Affinity users in our community. But yeah, yeah you think... can actually bring them into Procreate too. Um, I've, be, I've used them in Procreate as well. So yeah. Okay, cool. Then in that case, we're going to move on to our next one. So I'm just going to go ahead and just group this um, and we'll duplicate this layer. And so basically what I'm starting mm -hmm. off with here is... Um, yeah, so we're going to start off with the second design. So I've got... I'm back to my template again. Um, and then this time I'm going to, and I don't remember what I did last time. So we're just kind of good. We're going to wing it again here. So we're going to go to layer, create clipping mask. Did I use this one last time? I forget now. Maybe I did. Let's go with a different one. I'm mm -hmm. totally not yeah. going with the actual, um, prescripted, you know, but this will work. Yeah. So Rules are made to be broken. Exactly. We're just going to wing it here. So um, this is our second design. The, the idea here is to use a transfer to blend our photo into our background design. So I have a couple of transfers that I kind of identified as being perhaps contenders for our clipping mask. And I'm going to go into the transfers and overlays. And they are overlay number one, which is, I believe, this one here. So you can see when you're looking 